You may recall the design of this house has to do with collecting rainwater to put in the cisterns to provide water for the house. Well, it starts with gutters, and that's what we're going to do today. Get the gutters up. Well, this has been a long journey. First, we got the cisterns in and got the water system working in the house. But for the past year, we've been hauling water in the back of our pickup truck. And the reason it's taken so long is because before we did the gutters, we had to have the siding up and we had to have this door to the cellar done before that. And those all kind of fell by the wayside because of other projects that were in the line. So now we are actually ready to get the first gutter up and start getting water into that cistern so we don't have to haul anymore. I wanted to screw the gutter hangers directly into the rafter tails. In order to find those, I actually went inside the house and I could see my rafters from there. And I shot a laser and that laser went through the window and actually projected itself onto the fascia board, which was perfect. Once I got that initial mark, I was able to mark each rafter at 24 inch on center, and then I was ready to put the gutters up. And I actually have 70 feet along that back wall, so I decided to put a downspout right in the center at 35 feet. Now the downspout itself kind of looks ugly now, but Danielle assured me that she was going to plant some nice plants, as you can see there, that would cover all that up. Well, I'm dropping down into the hole. I've got to punch out the side for the pipe that goes to the filter system, and it's going to be real cold down in that cistern. Gotta love the ground temperature. Oh. Hope you're not claustrophobic. No, I'm not claustrophobic. Oh. You want to tell us why you have a harness on? In case I die, she can pull my dead body out. <laughs> yeah, because I ain't going in there after you. She's not going in after <laughs> me. All right. You guys have fun up on the surface here. Oh, oh that's cold. <laughs> oh! That's, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you need a... Uh... A, a dry I'm, suit. I'm gonna need some. Hey, you still got your lobster suit downstairs. My what? Your lobster suit. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, well hopefully I can see the where I'm punching out over there. Oh just jump in and get it over with. Oh no. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. That is cold. <laughs> hey wow, it's clear. It is very clean down here. There's not a bit of sediment in this tank, honey. I just attached your uh, your rope to a rebar post up here, so okay. if you get stuck, that's um, why. You'll have to give me the hammer, and I think I've got a real long metal rod. There it goes. Whoa, whoa. It moved. Okay, I'm looking at you with the camera here. Oh, hi. What's up? So yeah, why, why is this thing in the way? Is that just bad manufacturing? That's part of the, uh, yeah. So I am in the tank, and we just punched a hole in the side. It had knockout holes in there. The water's about three feet deep down here. There are two of these tanks, so right now we're probably looking at about 1,500 gallons of water. And uh, it's, it's cold water, I gotta tell you. It is cold water, which is nice. But I'm pretty impressed because after all that time, the, uh, there's no sediment on the bottom at all. That's just clean concrete. Um, there's a couple of probably loose things from what she just knocked out of the wall, and maybe a few things over there, but it's a really clean floor for the most part. Too. That's the water that goes into the house. So we will get busy here and see if we can get a pipe through there. This is not a fat man job. Emerging from the abyss. Yeah. The depths of the earth, quite literally. I, I can't get my knees up and I can't get my arms up. <laughs> and you're a skinny guy. <laughs> I need to pull you up just to this, get you out. This is like the birth canal. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was fun. Oh, it's hot up here. <laughs> no, it's just cold down there. 
Hi. That was fun. You're actually not as wet as I thought you would be. All no, that complaining just, and it was barely over your legs. Well, yeah, but <laughs> when you cover your legs in ice water, it kind of cools the body down. There's major arteries that go through there. That's okay. I'll let you have it. Yeah, I tied. See, I love you. I tied you to rebar. That's, yeah, don't so, you feel uh, appreciated? There's plenty of airflow down there now. I don't think I need this harness anymore. So, all right, let's get to work. <laughs> let's see the hole. Oh, cold. I might not have made enough. Uh, that doesn't stick very well. Okay. Oh, go slow. Yeah, it just kind of pushed it right out. Okay. Yeah, that did nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, here, can I hand you the, the bucket now? Yeah. Okay, there's some in it. Um, I'm going to keep a handful and keep messing around, but just try not to shift the pipe around too much. I'm down here uh, putting the couplings on in order to attach my filter to the piping system that's coming from the gutters right now. So I got to do a 90 degree angle. This filter I have is designed to set on top of cisterns, but we're actually going to put it in a box here and set it to the side of the cistern because of the way it goes in here. So we'll see how it all works out. Okay, so I've got the pit all dug out. I'm putting this as a container for the filter because I want this underground and I want this covered up and protected because in the winter I don't want it to freeze up. So it will actually go down. If you look down in here, this pipe turns 90 degrees and goes right into the cistern here. This fits right over the top. And then there is a, um, there is a band down there that I have to tighten to seal that shut. Now, and to get into the filter, I can actually lift this up and get to the filter. So we're making some progress here. I'm pretty excited. We are now gluing the sewer pipe to the filter and, uh, this will be the intake, and then right next to it, that's the outflow. So right now we're working on the inflow. Any words of wisdom? Well, <laughs> yeah. Pick a cooler day to shovel rock. Well, I want this pipe to be really stable um, because sometimes dirt does not get in there, and it leaves a gap below the pipe, which when you walk on it, it's going to crush and break the pipe. So, I'm going to make sure I get a good bed that this fits on. This is the end of the overflow pipe, and it has a self-sealing cap on the end that keeps rodents out, but allows water to flow freely. Well, I've got everything in this basin and I want to surround that with gravel because we have extremely hard clay in here and it's it's hard to pack that in. So I want this not to move and I want the pipes to be very stationary and held in place because once water starts flowing through there, it could shift things around quite a bit. So the gravel uh, helps pack it in really nice. The other thing it does is it prevents any of this muddy clay water if water does get around here or somehow seeps into this tub because it's not necessarily watertight it's not going to be muddy water it'll, it'll filter through that gravel you're just going to stand there and watch me well it's this is a lot filming is a lot easier than working that's why i do it so yeah exactly let's get these trenches filled in looking good Well, it's up and actually we've seen some rain, so that was good. We got to see it in action. And let's look at it step by step. First, we have a downspout in the middle of the back wall here. And the reason we did that is because on heavy rains, we don't want any water to escape and go over the gutter. So we wanted to keep the gutter high and not overload the downspouts. So it comes across the wall and joins with this one. So I've got 35 feet, a downspout, another 32 feet, and a downspout. 
they both empty into this Y here, and then it travels down to the secondary filter. The primary is this little guy right here, which are in the downspouts up there. It allows leaves to come and go up the ramp and still allow water to get in. So these are very effective and they're relatively cheap. This will keep the big stuff out. Let's go look at the other filter. So now we're at the actual filter. And if I take this off, I can show you the inlet and the outlet. So this is where it comes in from the gutters and this is the overflow. So let's take a look at the screen down here. As you can see, it comes in here and it swirls around and if it's a really super high flow, it will actually go out or if the cistern backs up, it will overflow it in there. But this, once it goes through the filter, it goes straight down, turns 90 degrees and goes into the cistern right behind me. But it's only rained twice and I had rinsed everything off to make sure everything was clean and we'd have no dirt, but after two rains, obviously there's some dirt that's up there. You just don't see it. This is a very nice filter. I could take this bag off, rinse it off, and go right back to filtering. I really like this design, and it's super easy to get it out of there, and super easy to put it back in. Well, we have a long way to go. We've only done the back half of our house roof. We also have the front half. We also have two sides of the barn. So we have a lot more water going into this system but it's nice to see that it's working so far right now i'm getting about 650 gallons per inch of rainfall and i measure that by just a cheap pvc pipe i have marked off the gallons in the cistern on this pipe and so i'm able to stick it in there look where the water line in and tell how high it is or how low it is anyway thanks a lot for watching this week we hope you've learned a lot and uh, leave a comment. We'd like to see if you have any improvements that we could uh, use or if you have any questions, we could certainly answer them. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and join us on our journey. We'll see you next time.